Taking on one of Australia's big banks is not for the faint-hearted. And then actually winning is as rare as rain in the outback. But Charlie Fallot, the 81-year-old grazier from central Queensland, is a special man and he won't be bullied. He took on the ANZ Bank after it forced his family off Carisbrook Station, their property of 50 years. The ANZ's behaviour was best described as aggressive, threatening and simply unacceptable. Incredibly, the bank now agrees. I've just returned from Carisbrook Station, where I've seen the most extraordinary backdown. The bank's chief executive, Mike Smith, flew 2,000 kilometres to tell Charlie he's sorry. And that's not all. Charlie's also getting the farm back. There are, however, lots of questions for the ANZ boss about how this all happened and what now for the many other distressed farmers just like Charlie. Charlie Fallot is preparing a bush welcome for his city guests. There haven't been any invited visitors here for a year and a half. Not since the bank took the farm and gave Charlie's family 20 days to get off Carisbrook. Today's visitors are from that same bank, the ANZ. Good day, Mike. Mike Smith, how are you? Very good to see you. Yeah, Very thank good you to for coming you. out. Well, thanks Enjoy. for having me. Yeah, it's not just another bank agent, but the boss, ANZ Chief Executive Officer, Mike Smith. Yeah, You've got a bit of cloud colour. Oh, well. More than 2,000 kilometres from the ANZ's head office in Melbourne, he's come to see the farm and the farmer that has shamed his bank into action. So Absolutely beautiful. So your boundary goes to the... To right the to those hills over line. there. Right. And how far is that? Is, is it's nine there. miles across it. Nine miles. How would you describe the ANZ's change of heart, Charlie? It was a big surprise. I've seen a, a complete turnaround. I don't know, a 180 degree turn. A complete turnaround indeed. We were with a frustrated Charlie recently when he took his five-year fight directly to the ANZ headquarters in Melbourne, a long way from Winton in Queensland's Central West. Hi. Charlie Flott's my name. Hi, Bill. Charlie. Yeah, how are you? Good. Steve Hi, Steve. How are you? He demanded a talk with the CEO. I'd written a letter to Mike Smith. Actually. Yeah, he's, um, he's not here at the moment, but we, we did receive your letter last week, so yeah. it, it has gone to his office. Mike Smith got that message. Why have you come here today? Um, well, as a result of your, your program, um, obviously we did some uh, pretty serious investigation into what was going on in terms of the particular case with Charlie. And um, I felt um, we had not covered ourselves in glory, um, to be perfectly honest. And I think that there was quite a bit of fault on our part. Charlie and his son Charles Jr. have struggled for years to get anyone from the bank on to Carisbrook. After the value of their property was halved without notice, funds cut off and loan defaulted, even though they'd never missed a payment. For them, the past five years have been a catalogue of administration errors, aggressive tactics and legal bullying by the ANZ. Where have you come from? Mike? England or? Uh, I was born. Born in England. Born in England. Yeah. But now, the ANZ's Mike Smith is on Carisbrook to right the wrongs, riding shotgun with Charlie to tour the property his bank foreclosed on. And this is all good country, Mike. Uh, sheep and cattle do really well. Right. Yeah, one. Well, yeah, thanks, Charlie. You be up there. Charlie and his son, Charles Jr back on the farm they thought they'd lost forever. The ANZ's Mike Smith and his head of regional lending, Christine Linden. No boardroom, but over a billy tea, it was down to business. 
I really apologise for what we put you through. You know, it's not been a not been our finest hour, I don't think. Thank and I'm sorry I wasn't there when you, you, you when you came down to Melbourne. You've apologised to him today. Mm. What are you saying sorry for exactly? The way that we have treated him, you know, in terms of the the issues that he's gone through. Are you able to give me details of what you are offering Charlie now? But he will get his farm back. And I felt the right thing to do was to come up and uh, shake his hand and say, you know, we'll fix it up. Charlie, you fought the bank and you've won. Well, oh, praise God, yes. <laughs> Does it feel like a big win? Well, probably not at this stage. It's taking time to digest and it's taking time to, to uh, realise perhaps that it's, uh, it's come to where we were hoping it could come to. Is it a somewhat bittersweet moment on the farm? Yeah, we don't celebrate it. Um, we're thankful for it, um, but yes, there's, uh, it was um, very wrong to, to put the family through what, what they did without having to do it when it's unnecessary, when it uh, should never have happened. There is no doubt the offer is substantial. The Falots get their property back, lock, stock and barrel. They also receive a large six-figure compensation package to help restore Carisbrook to working order after it was left vacant and neglected. It is a stunning backflip from the ANZ's position in May when Charlie was given only two options. Find $600,000 to buy the property back or receive $25,000 to walk away and stay quiet. So what's gone wrong in your bank? You're the boss. Um, inevitably, by the sheer size of the organisation, sometimes we get it wrong, you know, I, and I, I admit that, you know, we can't always get it right. This was a very unfortunate case. It is quite unique in, in, its, um, in, in the way it was dealt with. And, um, you know, I'm, uh, I'm very sorry for it. I would argue it's unique only in that it's now high profile. There seems to mm. be a, a pattern of the bank's behaviour that Charlie has experienced, that many other farmers that we're aware of have experienced also. Very aggressive tactics by the bank. But again, if you look at the total portfolio, we're, we're talking a very small number of issues. But I am reviewing, I'm having everything reviewed around this and, and certainly we'll try and sort things out. Mike Smith also revealed that review comes with a nationwide one-year extension to their moratorium on foreclosures where farms are affected by drought. Stop filming, sir, please. I don't want to have to seize your camera as well. Among the many to be reviewed are two farmers we've also featured this year. Right now, no one's under arrest for anything. And like Charlie, caught in the landmark ANZ mess. The, the... Basically, what we're going to do is the police process is get everyone's name and address. Grain producer Rod Cullerton who faced arrest when he tried to take back his farm that had already been sold. No, no, you just admitted it's a civil matter. Why are you here? Why are you here? No, no, no. When you say time frame, what, or a couple of weeks? A couple of weeks. And Bruce Dixon, whose struggle left him contemplating suicide and also highlighted the questionable tactics of receivers appointed by the ANZ. We took possession of a farm up at Bindi Bindi and we had to take a tactical response group. At the absolute core of these disputes is the ANZ's purchase in 2010 of Landmark's loan book. Within months of that takeover, dozens if not hundreds of farmers found themselves facing default and foreclosure. Charlie's case is generally agreed as the most clear-cut example. Obviously, when we had bought the original loan from, from Landmark, um, nobody uh, went out to see, OK, what is the case here? Um, the, there were some problems, you know, previously, and we just uh, let those run, as I say, through the lawyers, and that's, you know, that's not um, sensible. But how is that such a, a closed society, if you want to put it that way, in your bank, that, that cases like Charlie's are not known, that you don't realise that there's a problem. Yeah, look, I mean, I, I think you make a good point. Um, the fact that um, there are cases that fall between the cracks um, is, uh, you know, is, is very unfortunate, and, and I make no excuse for that. Um, I think that um, there is a concern that, as I, you know, really, that we have been too legally um, processed. <laughs>
excessive legal process and aggression that's now led to the head of that division being removed, according to Mike Smith. But a curious incentive for the bank's previous conduct could also be drawn from this document, the ANZ's sale and purchase deed of Landmark, and in particular what's called a clawback schedule. It allowed the bank to review and downgrade farmers' loans. The more bad loans, the bigger the discount on ANZ's final purchase price of Landmark. There was, it appears, a very deliberate strategy, almost a systematic strategy from March 2010 right. to uh, revalue their equity, downgrade the value of their properties, mm. engineer them into default. It was in the best interests of the bank under that clawback provision that these loans were seen to be unprofitable. Yeah, but I, you know, I don't really accept that that would have been a, a, a policy. It just isn't how a bank operates. You know, the best thing we can always do is to get the loan repaid in, in, um, and to make the customer successful. That's why we lend money to people. Do you reject what I'm suggesting to you? Am I wrong? No, I understand I mean, what you're saying. I understand the logic, um, but, I, but I don't think it's, um, it's a realistic uh, logic from the bank. Um, but can yeah. you see that it makes sense? Well, because I, I, almost every single yeah. one of these farmers, their problems began March 2010 when you took over Landmark. And it was wow. in the provisions of that, I'm going to have it here, the sale deeds, the sale and purchase deed, that the clawback policy, because it well, meant... It, it will be interesting to find out if actually that clawback was invoked. Yes. Um, and, and I will do that. On a scale of 1 to 10, how do you measure this win for Charlie? Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, I measure it at 100. Federal politician Bob Catter has been a champion of Charlie's cause and the plight of every farmer caught in the landmark ANZ dispute. He welcomes the review of every one of those cases and the promised moratorium on foreclosures until that's done. Should this deal give other farmers hope, though? If Charlie can win, right? If he can win from there, you, and I speak to every one of us that is under the gun here, you stand up and you fight. You don't let them walk all over the top of you. And you understand that there are people out there that will come in on your side. Whereas well, so my message to the people is stand up. You're Australians, fight. Well, it looks like we won't see a bit of green grass for a while, son, anyway. Charles Jr. and his father fought, however, the pressure for the past five years has been immeasurable. But even with a victory over the bank, they are humble and hope they've set a precedent for other struggling farmers. Um, I just hope that uh, I hope there's more to come for, um, for other people in similar situations. And uh, um, I hope there's some, um, that their situations can also be resolved. From losing the lot to the edge of bankruptcy, and now working out where to begin again. The for lots have a lot of hard work ahead. Charlie, I know it's been frustrating for you to watch mm. the property run down. What's it now going to take to get it back in working order? Well, it's going to take quite a, quite a lot um, to uh, restore things, actually to clean up the mess. Just to get it up and going and cleaned, and it's going to be a big job. Quite a lot of work, yes, absolutely. For Charlie, it's now just a matter of working with the ANZ on the finer details of the agreement before putting pen to paper. Yeah, we, we've um, basically agreed a, a settlement, and, and I think it's now, dare I say it, it's um, you know, the legal documentation. Um, but um, I will make sure that happens, absolutely. That's your guarantee? That's my guarantee. No more hurdles for the philosophy. Oh, no, 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 no. I think they've gone through enough. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.